Can you name a game that you recall really enjoying as a child, but it's been so long that your actual memories of it are vague and insubstantial? Those are the games for the Nostalgia Check, a new segment I want to start on my channel today. In the Nostalgia Check I'm going to revisit games I played growing up but haven't touched since. Will they let me down? Will they hold up? What lessons can I take from these old titles now that I have a vastly different outlook on games than I had back then? The plan is that I will start every Nostalgia Check video by taking notes of what I actually can remember of the title in question and then after having properly replayed it I'm going to see how it compares to the impressions it left in my mind. Mind. So basically this segment is about me systematically destroying my childhood memories and I think we can all agree that that is a fantastic idea. The game I want to start with today is Silver, an action RPG adventure from 1999 developed for the PC by Spiral House, who apparently were so influential back in the day they don't even have a Wikipedia entry. Clearly this bodes well. Now what do I actually remember of Silver? This might have been the first game I ever really owned for myself. Before that I was reliant on my friends having all the cool consoles of the time, but in 1999 when I was 9 or 10 I got my first very own computer and with it came this game. I do remember Silver being action focused but with innovative controls where you draw lines on the screen with your mouse cursor to perform different attacks, which as far as I'm aware has only ever been in a few other games like Daggerfall and Die by the Sword. And since I've played neither, this combat in Silver has always been a pretty novel concept to me, but I can't quite remember how it actually played out. I can recall the game having various party members, but during combat they mostly acted on their own, which is actually one of my favorite pet peeves in games nowadays, so I definitely expect that to cause some friction. I remember the titular villain of the game, Silver, to be an evil sorcerer that you were hunting for kidnapping your wife, meaning I probably shouldn't expect the storytelling to be very complex. But finally, an impression Silver definitely left 15 years ago is blowing my socks off on a visual level, with beautiful pre-rendered backgrounds as well as some really impressive boss fights against demons and dragons and whatnot. So let's see how Silver actually holds up. The game starts off with Fuge, who is Silver's son, despite looking himself like he's already in his late 70s, issuing the kidnapping of all daughters in town on his father's behalf, and just from his voice acting I can tell that my expectations regarding the writing will probably probably be on point. It is decreed that all women of childbearing age will be taken before the Emperor Silver, so that he may choose a new wife. This is not going to be a story with moral grey areas, this is going to be about a righteous young hero fighting the evil sorcerer to rescue his damsel in distress and avenge his grandfather. Complete with typical cliches such as a tiny group of unequipped rebels, a doomsday fortress standing in a sea of blood and the summoning of an apocalyptic god. Oh boy. I mean I get it, they reigned in the subtlety because this is a game for kids and now 17 years later I am no longer part of that target audience, so I shouldn't be too harsh on this. But playing Silver just for a few hours you realize that this lack of subtlety soon gives way to a lack of imagination and writing of it. Instead of having a good script in which your main characters decide on how to fight the villain, how to enter his fortress and how to retrieve the prisoners, the game lets lazy fantasy tropes drive the story. And and so before anyone can even come up with a plan of action, some magic oracle shows up with absolutely no input from the heroes and reveals to you that in order to defeat Silver you will need to gather the 8 magical MacGuffin orbs that are scattered across the land. What are these orbs? How will they help? Who buried them and why? Ah, it's fucking magic son, stop asking questions. What's even more jarring is that with cliches such as this rather than the agency of the heroes forming the story, none of these characters are even given any purpose. Personality. NPCs you meet just randomly decide to trust you and help you out, giving up priceless magical artifacts to some random adventurer without even needing to be convinced. Not a single one of your party members is even given a proper motivation to join your group either, because ultimately the one and only reason anyone in this game needs to do anything is, well, Silver is an evil prick and I would like him not to destroy our world, so yeah, sure. 
what the hell. It's honestly no miracle that characters end up being this boring and uncompelling when their only trait is disliking an over-the-top cartoon villain like Silver. And I found it genuinely disappointing when I realized that this game confused having a simple narrative with having a cheap narrative. I want to say I probably couldn't remember this game being so lazily written because everything is so bland and forgettable, but I think this just proves how much of an uncritical dunce I was when I was 10. Let's however talk about the gameplay, because playing this game is fucking weird, man. Now I did remember correctly that in silver you swing your mouse to swing your sword. Holding control and clicking anywhere leads to a normal attack, but holding control and drawing a small line in any major direction gives you different sword maneuvers. A line upwards executes a lunge attack, left and right give you swings to each side, and down performs a turnaround slash. You can also block and dodge, but the only other major attack attacks you unlock are special moves that are done by just holding the left mouse button for a moment and all of them boil down to basic AOE attacks, so aside from a few ranged weapons with very limited ammo, that's pretty much it. You just learned the extent of your combat moveset in the first three minutes of the game and now there's a bazillion of trash mobs between you and the end of it. As much as this mouse driven sword combat might sound novel, there is very little depth here. Especially since most of the time there are multiple fast enemies on the screen it is a real problem that your character doesn't really lock onto targets and just keeps attacking in front of him. When you want to move your character, you have to let go of control and click on the screen, but to attack, you have to hold control and draw lines all over the screen, and alternating between the two on a second to second basis is awkward as all hell. Against groups of enemies, I just found myself mindlessly spamming the right swipe since it had the widest arc, and maybe followed up with a lunge attack. And just as a reminder, that meant I had to furiously drag my mouse to the right and then up, so I would actually invite you to look at the mouse cursor and my combat footage if you want to have a good laugh. Even the epic one-on-one -on -one boss fights I remembered at the start of the video fall very flat now that I'm actually replaying them again. With less enemies on the screen, the combat system should have its time to shine here, but then I realized that against single enemies, the dodge move is way too brain dead because it chooses the right dodge direction automatically and that trivializes just about every attack. Not to mention that some of these bosses are incredibly exploitable too, like you can see in the huge fight right here. But oh, the sword fighting is only one half of the combat mess in silver. The other is trying to figure out just how the fuck you should handle your party members. As I remember, this game gives you companions that you can control, but if you don't, they fight on their own. I don't remember this bothering me as a child, but since this has become a full-blown trend in gaming lately, it certainly does now. Here's the deal, if a game gives me party members, I want full control over their actions at any given point. But just like all party-based action RPGs nowadays, Silver wasn't built with that intention in mind. So not only does it lack the tools to properly control your party, playing just one character is a full-time job anyway. And in Silver in particular, the party AI is so limited that they don't even really fight on their own. If you don't assign them a new target every other second, which is impossible anyway because you're preoccupied with your own character, they would just stand around doing nothing. And even if they fight, they mostly block and dodge and bear attack, leaving you to deal any actual damage. So you try highlighting your entire party and letting them move and attack all at once, but then they forget about blocking and dodging entirely and take ungodly amounts of damage themselves. So no matter what you try, your party members behave suboptimally at best or are a goddamn liability at worst. So what's even the point in having them? Looking at it now, even if Silver had a better AI, the fact that my party members will never perfectly do what I want them to do would still be the ultimate problem. And it's funny that a game from 1999 makes me realize this because that is exactly what bothers me so much about modern RPGs. If you want to make an RPG action focus, then keep it to having a single character. And if you want to include party members, then make it turn-based, or at least give me a tactical pause function. Just for fuck's sake, stop diluting games with these half-assed hybrid systems. They aren't good design nowadays, and as we've just seen, they weren't good designs. 17 years ago. And with Silver combining a combat system that is both clunky and shallow with a party that you're supposed to control but don't have the means to, this game that I once enjoyed so much turned out to be an absolute pain now that my tolerance for bad design has gone down.
Not all struggles I encountered in this game were bad though. One thing I did not expect was to get some honest to god survival elements out of silver and they came from old design conventions that as far as I'm aware have mostly been abandoned by modern games. Save points for example, yeah those were way more common back then but in silver it's not just conventional ones, here you get to use every save point you find only once and then it vanishes without even healing you. Combine that with silver's somewhat metroidvania-esque world design and the fact that healing item drops are predetermined so you can't farm them endlessly and this created some serious tension. Because oftentimes when you reach a save point you now have to choose between either progressing the main story or exploring a side path, yet save points tend to appear only when you progress the main story. Meaning if you decide to wander off exploring you have to survive the side path, then make it back to the main path, continue surviving and progressing there and then maybe eventually you will get to save your game. But all the while you don't know where that next save point is going to be or how many healing items will drop from here until you reach it. So every time I took damage and had to heal myself I felt terrible. Which gave Silver a level of decision making I seriously did not expect. All going back to limited healing and saving. I really enjoyed this as a challenge though. I think this is part of the reason why something like Dark Souls can bring back exactly those limitations into a more modern context with bonfires and estus flasks and suddenly make it to widespread critical acclaim by creating genuinely tense gameplay. What I asked myself at that point though was how come I don't remember this game being so tense? Surely this would have been even harder for me as a child, right? But the answer to that came very soon, because unfortunately Silver didn't stay this way. Soon you start gathering the 8 magic orbs, each one unlocking a new spell, and magic in this game is fucking broken. The first two spells, which are just fire and ice, are fine, but then you find the orb of healing and this game is officially over. Because mana, while scarce at first, at least endlessly refills over time, so with the orb of healing you now have an infinitely usable healing spell at your disposal and the tension I just described, which was built around limited health drops, is immediately kicked out the window. Plus, around this point you pick up the last two party members in the game, Keijin and Chiaro which have by far the highest mana pools out of all your companions and allow you to shit out so much magical healing and damage that the rest of the game, which is still two thirds by the way, became an absolute cakewalk. My characters became so stupidly overpowered that one mage alone could take out a screen full of enemies and for the entire second half of the game I became completely disengaged with silver. It's kind of a shame really, the game definitely still looks as pretty as I remember. I love pre-rendered backgrounds, there's a ton of visual variety here and some of the sound effects for spells and clashing weapons are so iconic and etched into my brain that they instantly brought back tons of memories. But as it turns out, now that I look at it more critically than back when I was 10, Silver is just badly designed and weird as fuck to play. Yet amidst the completely broken difficulty curve, the bad writing, the clunky combat and stupid ineffectual party members, there is an idea here. They wanted to turn keyboard and mouse controls into a more action focused moveset to create a more streamlined RPG than what was on the market back then. Nowadays you can use a gamepad for combos and action gameplay but in 1999 controllers on PC weren't nearly as common so the developers of Silver tried to translate mouse movements into sword movements. It just didn't work however, maybe it could have been less clunky if I could use the WASD keys for movement, maybe if I could draw more complex mouse patterns than just up down left or right for bigger attack variety the combat could be deeper. But even then it is questionable if the concept of swinging your mouse to do sword combat would ever stand a chance against the more ergonomical inputs you can achieve with normal controller buttons and even if there was merit to this kind of gameplay, Silver has way too many other problems to make it work. Perhaps I should give those other few titles with similar combat a try to get a better comparison but as it stands right now the game I once loved turned out to be a failed experiment dressed in a painfully mediocre story. I think it's safe to say that Silver did not pass the nostalgia check. Boken signing out.
Well, if you're still with me at this point, then I want to say thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the nostalgia check, because there are a bunch more old games that I really want to check out again, even though, you know, this one didn't go so well. And if you want to see anything else I do on my channel, the game analysis, the discussion videos, the game reviews, then please feel free to check it out and subscribe, because there are a bunch more videos like it waiting for you right there, and there are a bunch more videos coming in the future. So I hope to see you the next time. Until then. Bye-bye.